you geeks, the Shattered Plains has loomed so large within the Stormlight Archive's mythology and canon that we really have started to take it for granted. And yet, after a few books there, we still know very little about its history and origin. Why was it shattered? When was it shattered? What were the listeners doing there? What are the chasm fiends doing there? This is an illustration of the Leviathan, the creature guarding the entrance to Atlantis. With something like that, I would have white wine. Spoiler warning through Rhythm of War, though these facts come across as obscure bits of trivia in the front four so far, all point to a big mystery a great and terrible deed done by someone divine that the listeners witnessed, maybe? And maybe they didn't see what they thought they saw. Human Reckoning Nat and Natten's historical timeline can be so confusing when comparing it to the nice, clean history of man we got in the way of kings for Roshar. This is because Nat Natten is like Egypt on Earth, a very old kingdom slash country that has lasted for thousands of years and maintained the same name despite having various shapes and capital cities. So when Shalon says things like Nat Natten was, one of the epic kingdoms, the capital of Nat Natten, Stormseat, was right here on the Shattered Plains. She can only mean that Stormseat was the capital of Nat Natten during its Epic Kingdom period. Now, the Epic Kingdoms narrows it down to sometime during the desolations they were created and as a collective only fell as recently as the fall of the hierarchy which, like ancient Egyptian history, is... A long ass time. And I will remind you, it is not cursing if I'm talking uh -huh. about donkeys. At some point during this thousand year period, according to Wit, Stormseat was a fabulous city. Before that kingdom's fall, blessed with grand poise and beauty, the Natan people were famous across all of Roshar. Why, if you'd lived back then, you'd have viewed the East as a place of great culture, not an empty wasteland. Thus, until making this video, I had inferred that Stormseat was the capital of Nat Natten as recently as the Recreants, or 2,000 years from present-day Roshar. However, this did not square at all with the other great scholarly consensus of Rosharan historians that it's been centuries since Stormseat fell. It was destroyed during Aharietiam itself. Aharietiam is a solid 2,000 years before the events of the Recreants and the rise and fall of the Hierarchy. And yet, Rosharan human historians have merely glossed over this chasm of historical data. What were the Natan people doing? doing during this time, besides apparently finding a new capital city? Although human historians seem uninterested in telling us, there is one group of people who can. Listener Reckoning The songs of the listeners are a fantastic source of alternative Rosharan history, and on a meta level, I love what Sanderson has done here. Unlike the forced and contrived secret histories of Mistborn or The Wheel of Time, we get something that feels to me more organic and realistic, as these are the collective memories of a minority who was highly isolated of their own volition. Daring was the challenge made, Mother sang when the last legion abandoned thought and power in exchange for freedom. They risked forgetting all, and so songs they composed, a hundred stories to tell, to remember. 
Now, although the listeners experienced a cultural dark age of forgetting once their ancestors gave up their forms, the song still preserved what it was like at the time that the songs were written. Also, on a meta level, this is Sanderson telling us that this is the period that is important, when the songs were written. Now, also like epic tales or the 150 biblical psalms, it may seem to a modern perspective that those were written all at once. I've heard there was a secret chord that David played. But historically we know they weren't. So this period of what the listeners were observing is very key to the future of the Stormlight Archive, I believe. And at this time, the listeners were aware of what the actual fused were. Our gods were born, splinters of a soul, of one who seeks to take control, destroy all lands that he beholds with spite. They are his spren, his gift, his price. Since they recall the actual fused, their cultural memory implies that it stretches back 4,000 years before the false desolation to before Ahar Yetiam, back to the cycle of desolations of Rosharan shadow days. However, there are other ways of calculating this, like... Math is a really cool thing. So get off your ass, let's do some math. Math, 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 math. Legend tells us that the last legion set out from the Dark Home to the Nat Natan region, approximately 400 strong. So when Gavilar finds them, their people is approximately thousands strong. Not tens of thousands, just thousands. So let's make this math easy and go with 3,000. Now, the internet tells me that the average growth rate of humans in the pre industrial Earth age was 0.04%. Listener perspectives tell us that the humans breed much quicker than listeners do, but also. The Alethi can make grain from rocks, so they ain't living in a pre-industrial society, population-wise, whereas the listeners are, so I think it's fair to use 0.04% for their growth rate. Mathing that out, we get that it's been approximately 5,038 Earth years since the last Legion marched which on Earth goes back to... Many centuries ago, not long after the Bible began. If we divide that number by 1.1 to get Rosharan years, that is 4,580 years. Incidentally, a Haryetiam happened 4,500 years before Gavilar's assassination, which is pretty darn close to the obscure human recollection that happened during a Harietium, but not quite. Oh, wow, that's a pretty big butt. One can fit a lot of desolations in those last 80 years. As the Stormfather recalls, Near the end, desolations came separated by fewer than 10 years. There was less than one year between the last two. The souls of the heralds had worn thin. They broke almost as soon as they were caught and tortured in damnation. So it's plausible that the last legion marched a few or 10 desolations prior to the one resulting in a Harietiam, as Raboniel recalled the Last Legion's defiance and how weird it was that they succeeded. Your people were the only group of singers to successfully reject fused rule and make their own kingdom. Were there 
unsuccessful attempts, Venley dared to ask to craving many, Raboniel said. This implies that the fused knew the last legion left during the cycle of desolations and yet allowed them to live on, probably sensing that the heralds were cracking and that they would have plenty of time in eternity to deal with the fallout. But then a Harietian pulled a fast one, allowing the listeners to thrive in the land where it seems demons fear to tread. Knowing when the songs were written is key to understanding when the planes were shattered, as the songs themselves speak of this event. The last legion, that was our name then, warriors who had been sent to fight in the farthest plains. This place that had once been a nation was now rubble. Under the broad strokes of historical hindsight, it sounds like the plains were destroyed before the last legion set out. However, why would the fuse seek to secure a barren wasteland? And how do the songs later speak with confidence to how the planes were truly destroyed? They blame our people for the loss of that land. The city that once covered it did range the eastern strand. The power made known in the tones of our clan. Our gods were not who shattered these planes. This implies to me that they witnessed the destruction of the Shattered Plains, and as a people seeking freedom from fused control, it is unlikely that they would have taken the fused word for it that someone else shattered the planes. As I was saying, hey, oh! Somebody broke that. Thus placing the time of the shattering of the planes a few decades before Harietiam, which makes the steel tools that the listeners found in the ruins of Stormseat just that much more marvelous. Eshenai's good hunting knife was one of the weapons her ancestors had salvaged from the ruins at the center of the Shattered Plains, with beautiful metal that had lines in it and a carved hilt of majestic detail. Dalinar's vision showed us that at some point during the desolations, metalworking was common on Roshar. You call this archaeology? Yet it is not the sort of skill set Tom has been used to returning to. Kalak will teach you to cast bronze, if you have forgotten this. We will soul cast blocks of metal directly for you. I wish we could teach you steel, but casting is so much easier than forging, and you must have something we can produce quickly. Your stone tools will not serve against what is to come. These steel tools were so different from what the humans conceived of as being pre aharietium that Axendweth assumed that they came from the time of the Recreants, which I now realize was probably a red herring. Communism was just a red herring. Rather, if Stormseat fell about ten desolations before Aharietium, it points to a thriving civilization existing on the plains, a jewel of human civilization that somehow got destroyed, and it would make sense for the human perspective that the fuse did this out of spite. But the listeners say they didn't. So, who did? The planes were shattered in a cymatic pattern, like those patterns that for Kolinar or Aemia, but far more violently. This opens up a can of worms to theories that I cannot possibly cover within this video, so we're going to focus on the theory that seems to support the listener's decision to say... Well, we've come from behind in every game in this tournament so far, and we can do it again. We can beat these guys. ...about the fuse and the lines with Taravangian's insight that Odium, or rather Ray's, had been injured 
once. Weakened by his battles in the past, then deeply wounded by honor, this being had been enslaved by the power. Approaching a Harietiam, Honor would have seen that his heralds were weakening, and it would have been honorable of him to try and help them. And if he, through his godly sight, could see that destroying that Natan would injure Odium, then perhaps he did it. I'm also relying on Sanderson's love of numerology in the Cosmere as a whole. In particular, there is a Judean Christian story of that one time a god used the number 10 to destroy the powers of other gods to free an entire people. Let my people go. But Sanderson doesn't do direct allegory, for which I am grateful because if he did, this channel would be super boring. Rather, he's got to invert a trope as big and as blatant as this. So how do we invert this trope? Well, honor is already dead, so how does a god die after such a great display of power? Well, Odium does tell us that. I am not going to break my word, because if I did, it would create a hole in my soul, which would let cultivation kill me. And we know that Odium, in fact, killed Honor sometime after the recreants. So, to quote the sum of all wisdom, Aiden, how does he know that? Was it merely another piece of wisdom drawn from his never-ending well of fatherly quips? Or was it from personal experience? Did Honor break his word or act dishonorably when acting like an ancient god of Mesopotamia, destroying Atlantis, or like that other inhospitable city? Judgment and wrath be poured out on Sodom. We have the Stormfather's own word that Honor was raving like, well, a mad herald before Odium to finally kill him a mere 2,000 years later. As Wit says, a thousand years is nothing for a shard. And as we've seen, Cultivation, the canonically awesome god of Roshar, inverting that trope, it took her 2,000 years to kill Odium after he killed Tanavast. It would just be such a great trope inversion if a god smiting from the heavens in a display of power and strength is actually a sign of inner weakness. So this is all a very long-winded way of saying that I no longer believe that Ba'ida Misham's capture shattered the Shattered Plains. And although this is my best theory on the topic, in truth... I'll tell you. I don't know. So, I'm very open to hearing your thoughts and comments in the comment section below. Please like, share, and subscribe if you want to see more. Thanks for watching. Bye!